Hey, welcome back to another episode of Sailing Around Britain. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be taking part in the Jester Baltimore Challenge to Ireland. I had a couple of days uh, just spared to look around Plymouth City, and uh, this is us up at Plymouth Ho, looking over the sound there. So I was really looking forward to uh, taking part in the Jester Challenge and meeting some of the skippers um, while I was in the marina, so Roger Taylor. Actually came round, not the Roger Taylor from Queen, um, that is Roger Taylor from Ming Ming. Uh, so I got a bit of a chat with him, which is really cool. And more not too far away from Katrina uh, was this mini transat called Number Two. But Google revealed that actually won the mini transat race in 2021. And then it was time to hoist the Jester Bergie, uh, go and have a meal and a chat in Jolly Jacks, and get ready for the start which was 12 o'clock on the Sunday I uh, managed to get a look around the marina meet a few of the skippers and their boats nice to have a look on board as well see all the sort of mods and stuff that they've been doing and there's George Hunter in his Hurley spindrift that's heading out towards the start So we're just heading out, it's 20 past 11. Just going through the bridge at Plymouth uh, with the other jesters. Uh, quite a few of us. <laughs> um, it's not the main up. Uh, there is a little bit of wind um, and a lot of moisture in the air. I think we're going to get some thunderstorms to be honest. If that's what it feels like, I might be wrong. We've got, we've got about half an hour to the start, it's half eleven now. So we're just listening out on Channel 8 for uh, information on the start. Uh, there'll be a call about 10 minutes to the start time, 12 o'clock. Um, and two shots on Ewan Salisbury Talia's shotgun from the starting line yacht Eclipse um, and then another one at 5-2-12 uh, and then the final call at 12 o'clock for the start time so start time at 12 o'clock which is in about 25 minutes Brilliant! Got a lot of the Jester challenges are uh, up against the breakwater there. I'm trying to keep out here um, in the some breeze from that's coming into the sound, which I've got. I mean, I've just got the engine ticking over because we've got this. We're quite close to the channel, and there's this uh, supply vessel or something coming in, naval supply or whatever coming in. So Equinox is a moody. 33 with a Ukrainian flag. Drayston port can off to starboard. We're about an hour after the official start. It's been extremely light coming out. Um, and I've, we've all been doing a sort of element of zigzagging and tacking, trying to maintain some speed. Uh, this tack is better because we've got the tide with us. So I'm making an extra couple of about a knot and a half over ground. We've just got some Sarah up front, John Passmore, and then George Hunter is the next boat ahead in his Hurley 22 Spindrift. Got a couple behind us, still making their way out. I say it's getting a little bit better now. I'm up to 10 knots, occasionally eight between eight and 10 knots of wind. 
um, and I've brought my sheets back uh, just to try and really flatten the Genoa as much as possible. But yeah, if we can maintain this heading, uh, a little bit more wind would be nice, but if we can maintain this heading, we may only have to just put one small tack in between now and the lizard, um, which is <laughs> some way ahead still. Pretty slow progress, to be honest. Um, we've at least cleared the sound as uh, much as possible. I'm trying to get a little bit of way offshore. Um, not to find wind, just because uh, really, um, as it draws in later in the day, I'd uh, like to try and get my head down at some point. Um, and yeah, it's better to be a little way offshore than stuck up along the coast here. So the wind's finally come back. I've got about 12 knots. Um, some people wouldn't think there was much in that, but uh, there's plenty for me to get away. Uh, it's been really, really light, uh, averaging between 5 to 7 knots over the last 4 hours, really, um, since leaving Plymouth. Um, it's now, what is it now, uh, 10 to 7. And, uh, yeah, we're... As I said, we've been making really slow progress, but I think we're sort of now coming into the sort of wind zone uh, in the bay, which is kind of as forecast. So uh, the tide is starting to weaken off a little bit. So um, I'm back on a 270 degree course. There's still the fishing trawlers around, so just keeping an eye out for them. Um, I just ran into, well, I had George Hunter's in his spit spin drift came past a little while ago quite close by and I think Black Magic was behind him not that far behind either um, but it looks like they're heading out offshore uh, further out <clears throat> which definitely makes sense I think given the fact that night is coming and I'm still playing musical chairs with these trawlers okay so it's half past eight and it's dinner time and you should see what's on the menu tonight this is probably the best Frankenstein meal I've ever cooked. It started out as a chicken vegetable soup, and then I thought I'd juju it up a bit and put an onion in, and then it looked a bit sort of oniony, so um, I've now put some rice with it, and now it looks more like a chicken and sick kind of meal. Twenty to twenty to ten. Um, and we're about, I'd say, twenty miles. I think last I checked, twenty miles east of the Helford River. Um, still trying to make a bit of gains on the lizard. Um, it's extremely difficult with this wind direction, um, as it's uh, as it's coming from where we want to go. Uh, so there's been some pretty hefty tax involved. It's actually quite nice to be uh, on a passage like this and knowing there's other people like doing the same thing I'm doing. It's quite strange. Um, always like they're sort of like with you on the, on the boat. It's really weird. Uh, it's, it's quite surprising how quickly you can, even with like one minute you're, you're standing quite close to each other and the next minute sort of you'll change tack or whatever. And um, you'll lose sight of that, that mast and sails quite quickly. It's surprising. A little bit of an update, uh, it's about a quarter to midnight, um, uh, for the last hour I've had a mixture of things happen, um, I've had dolphins which were really nice, about 10 of them, all swimming alongside, um, the wind has got up uh, to about sort of 15, 16 knots, something like that, and um, the other thing is there's a croaking sound coming from my mast, um, and it's coming through the boat. Um, and it's quite a, a distinctly different sound. 
Um, I've been up on deck. I've looked around to see if there's anything stupid knocking onto it, um, but I cannot see anything. Um, it sounds like it's coming from further up. Um, I can't really see because it's dark. Um, got my head torch on and I had a shine up there. I can't see what's going on. I've got a suspicion it could be the bearing block on the top of the uh, Genoa, um, and it's um, maybe not. Um, got enough tension on it and it's just creaking up and down slightly but it does sound like a croaking almost like um, and it's running through the mast um, and through the mast compression post as well so uh, not knowing what it's what, what it actually is and not wanting to spend too much time on deck in the dark I've, um, I've put a reef in the main um, just in case if it is rigging related um, I'm not putting too much pressure on it um, and I've sort of furled the uh, the head cell in, but it is still making this sound. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is uh, wait until light and then um, give it a good look over. Um, and uh, if, if I still can't see what's going on, I think I'm going to call in somewhere and uh, see if I can uh, lower the Genoa or something like that and, and check out the bearing block or whatever. Uh, Wow, I just saw a meteor off. That is amazing. Oh, everything's happening. What's going on? That was incredible. That was really bright, that one as well. Excellent. Yeah, we're just, the uh, cloud coverage is starting to abate a little bit, um, so you can see the, the night sky quite well. So. Um, yeah, so uh, I'll probably start trying to get my head down um, in a little while. Uh, self steering did a fantastic job. And, uh, yeah, we'll see. So it's five o'clock in the morning and we are approximately 28 miles east of the Lizard. I am currently bearing on a course of about 150, 160 degrees, trying to get some uh, clearance sort of for a for attack on 270 around the lizard um, it should be good in the next couple of minutes to do that this is my new on the move bunk uh, my lee cloth are really damp for some reason um, so I've just, <laughs> just ended up sticking my head into the quarter there, which actually works really, really well. Uh, I've got my timer just hanging up there. It's uh, a bit of a den, and you can hear everything from in there. Um, but it is working extremely well. I'll just do a little bit of a show round. We've got uh, a few boats around. I've been around all morning. Um, early hours of the morning, just been sort of doing the same kind of thing but keeping distances because I kind of guess that we're all trying to get some rest. I definitely have. Uh, well it's not, <laughs> I think I've nodded off properly a couple of times but it's more kind of just napping really, closing your eyes sort of thing. But. So the sun's out which is lovely. Um, We've got about 14 to 16 knots of wind uh, from the southwest, um, and it was quite variable yesterday afternoon. It was sort of shifting around quite a bit, but now we've come further offshore, um, and it's become a lot more kind of sort of sustained, really. Uh, the contingencies are probably going to be uh, one of the bays on in the Scilly Isles. If if things get really, really tiresome and, you know, if I'm really struggling with the sleep, I'm, I'm feeling okay at the minute. I found the rest spots really helpful um, and I was surprised how kind of refreshed I feel from them. I still feel tired and I'll probably have another couple of like naps later on. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's actually easier than I thought and it's getting easier the more I do it, so. There it is, lizard. Point, and uh, we're uh, probably, I think we're about five nautical miles to the south of Lizard at the minute. 
Here we've got Bob in his helmatic sabai over there, and uh, he's doing keeping well offshore. He was behind me earlier, and I've I cut in to sort of grab the stronger sort of parts of the current round lizard, and then John Passmore and Samsara is just on the stern still. We've sort of been clustered together for or so that like the last nine hours really and then I think George in good report is is out, out ahead somewhere I, I'd seen him early this morning Down below is an absolute tip at the minute I've got water dripping in from some bulkhead somewhere um, so I've just bunged the sides with towel to <laughs> try and like soak it up a bit um, but they look like they're ready for change out um, yeah, it's kind of like where I'm resting at the minute, um, and yeah, it's a bit claustrophobic down there with this shop, um, small boat, lots of movement, and trying to make a brew like on this tack is always a mission because you're, <laughs> you're kind of working uphill trying to put coffee into cups and stuff. It's it's easier on the other tack. A couple of the um, Jester uh, AAS transmitters have got. Um, quite a clever title which is I've seen a couple of times actually I saw it on a boat which wasn't a jester earlier on in, in the Solent and it just has the boat name and then states that it's a solo sailor on board so it gives everyone a good idea that they might just be catching a, a couple of Zeds um, or doing other things down below and might not be actually in command of the vessel if you like I think that's a really good fe feature uh, Just sat on the uh, cockpit locker, and uh, we're just approaching Silly Isles now. That's quite cool. And the first major headland of uh, the Round Britain trip. Um, I think we've got about 25 miles left to go, so anticipate to be there about midnight this evening. Um, all going well with the wind. Hopefully that stays as it is. Uh, the tides are quite strong around here, so we'll see how they uh, impact our speed over ground in a little while. So I just had a, a bit of a close call with this one, um, and we had a we had a collision track of about, well, a closest proximity of about 0 0.02 of a nautical mile, so we would have hit. Um, so I went to starboard, and he went to port. So again, we were on a convergence track. Then I went to port, and he went to starboard. And I thought he was taking the piss. So I started the engine, and finally he's got the message. I've started the engine, just this, it's in idle, I haven't put it in gear at all at any point, it was merely just for safety reasons, um, because I really wasn't sure what the hell he was doing or his intentions, so yeah, can't see the nationality or anything, but we're starting to come into the sort of larger shipping traffic areas now, so probably worth checking the engines. Uh, ready to go if you like just in case but hopefully um, not too many more of them
last. So many of them. Not a bad start to the evening. In the back again. You've been following me for the best part of about an hour, I think. Not much wind, but plenty of dolphins. Well, this has been going on for the best part of that. about an hour and a half now. I think uh, might have night visitors. It's absolutely unbelievable. They just keep coming back. And they're behind because they like the Hebridean. Just playing with it. now been 31 hours since the start of the Baltimore challenge um, we're just hitting uh, sort of the start bits of the silly hours I haven't actually got eyes on them yet um, it's, uh, it's just drawing into the evening I'm actually just uh, fatigue has just hit a little bit I've um, been playing around with the sails um, I furled a Genoa and raised the my cruising chute so um, yeah it's uh, I'm hoping to get round uh, the Silly Isles uh, sometime tonight and get clear and out into the um, Celtic Sea um, so I can get my head down because uh, if it carries on like this I may even consider if it's slow and I'm just getting more and more tired <laughs> I think I'm just going to head into one of the bays um, or something might use the first light and just get my head down for a few hours before going across to Ireland, I'm not sure. We'll just have to see, um, see about progress really, I think that's the main thing um, over the next sort of couple of hours and um, just see what the evening brings in terms of wind. A lovely sunset, just uh, coming alongside the Silly Isles now. Coming up to nine o'clock on Monday the 19th. I was suffering from lack of wind around here. <coughs> uh, as you can hear, um, I've been trying pretty much all well later part of the afternoon to get driving around the Sillies. Uh, we're against the tide, unfortunately, up until about now. Um, I've not had much luck. Uh, had plenty of dolphins, which are fantastic, but um, unfortunately progress has been quite badly hampered by a lack of wind completely, and from a pretty poor direction as well. Um, I tried the cruising chute, uh, and I'll probably try that again later. Um, but my concern now is obviously we're sort of in amongst the shipping lanes, which is not ideal, really. Um, I'll probably get in close to the Silly Isles if uh, if the worst comes to it and drop the hook. But otherwise, okay. See. So uh, it's uh, coming up to about five o'clock 
Uh, so it's probably about half four. Four o'clock um, Tuesday morning. Um, we've just cleared the Silly Isles and crossing the ch uh, shipping lane, the last shipping lane in the UK, um, off, uh, off sort of bearing, can't really get my words out at the minute, I'm quite tired and I've been messing around with um, sail trim and the likes of to try and keep us on a decent course so we can get across these shipping lanes as quickly as possible. The Hebridean is a bit fickle at the minute, I don't know why. I think there's an issue with the um, with uh, where the wind vane sits and the me um, mechanism there. I think it's slightly damaged. I need to have a look at it when it gets lighter um, and I can get some um, sort of better visual on it. But so we've got thundery showers, showers at the minute. Um, there's still the Jester fleet. I'm just looking at them now on the AAS screen, and um, then we're all sort of like, kind of part of us are heading across uh, all at the same time, which is quite interesting. We sort of lost sort of visual on them for a while. Oh, what was it? A close encounter with um, with a fishing pot a little while ago. Quite a large one. This really is not the place to be running over something like that. Um, right in the middle of the shipping lane. In fucking 60 meters of water or whatever. Um, quite strange. So, yeah, now we're heading uh, west. We're going to Fastnet, which is our next waypoint. That's like 130 odd miles away. My hands are absolutely destroyed. I have got a pair of gloves, but they just went wet and my hands just went mushy inside them. And I'm taking them off now and using that. So, yeah. A little bit of an update. We want to see what happens during a just a Baltimore challenge. This is kind of it, very slow. I think the fastest has been done in is like, or the average time is about anything between 48 and 56 hours. Uh, well, considering we started Sunday midday and it's now Tuesday morning, that's uh, yeah. Well, we're not going to make we're not going to make that sort of time expectancy but it is what it is. So it's just gone eight o'clock in the morning. Wind has died down quite a lot. I've got the cruising shoot up um just running on that at the minute and uh taking the mainsail down and just uh yeah, trying to get some sleep. Had an absolute horrendous um, time around the Silly Isles this morning. Um, it was light winds and we were doing about three and a half to four knots coming around there with the tide, uh, just approaching the sort of western um, traffic separation scheme there, the big shipping lane. And uh, visibility just went to like almost like zero um, and the rain was I mean I <laughs> I jumped on the helm with my jacket and my life jacket on uh, and my weather boots but in my um, in my cotton shorts and uh, yeah I was absolutely drenched through my shorts were absolutely ringing wet um, my jacket was also very very wet um, I just I didn't have it. There was no choice in the matter. I had to I had to do something. But yeah, we we pulled out of the rain shower and ended up <coughs> kind of caning it over the TSS early hours of the morning with a bit of wind, which was nice. Um, and we've been dumped here on the other side of it since then. So it's been a bit of a hit and miss six hours, and I'm pleased to I've been able to get my head down for a little bit um, this morning, which is nice. Uh, I'm very grateful for that because I was getting extremely tired. I didn't want to go to sleep like around that area because it would just, you know, you didn't know when there was going to be a ship come along or you're going to bump into another jester. It's definitely a different feel being on this water to anything I'm normally used to. It feels more, um, I don't know, bigger. The birds and the, I think they're yeah. storm petrels, I think they are, but they look like 
blinking pterodactyls, they're massive. Um, and you feel like you can see for a thousand miles, it's just like the visibility is just insane. So I need to keep an eye out for whales, <coughs> and I'm not talking about the country either. Um, humpback whales, um, especially on the Irish side, have been already sighted quite frequently at the the contour lines. So the contour lines is a 50, 80 metre depth and it goes to 100 metres and they're commonly sighted around where we are now at the 100 metre contour lines. So where they're coming up through the Atlantic, so like sort of breeding grounds I suppose. Um, or on route to other places um, and it's yeah they have been sighted I think as well like there's been fin whale sightings which would be to see one of them would be absolutely amazing we've been given a, a bit of a guide as to what to look for so there's certain kind of like spout patterns and things like that to tell tell what they're doing and what they are so usually the first thing that you'll see are just like the big plumes of um, water coming out through the blowhole well um this is a calm nice calm sea for it so I'm, i am trying to keep my eyes peeled and see if i can see any we've had a lot of dolphins um as you've seen well just yesterday it was unbelievable i think they were mate they were actually mating as well so that was kind of weird um but yeah plenty of dolphins we had some more this morning while i was having breakfast um yeah just i think there was probably a good 50 yesterday um and about the same number this morning all just like swimming over the boat when i was uh laying in my bunk i could hear them banging like rubbing up against the hull as well so that was pretty impressive There's George. Just had a solar shower. Makes me feel about a hundred million times better. Wasn't sure how I was actually going to do it. Um, I didn't really want to stand on the deck. Uh, we're doing quite well at the minute. The, the boat is heeled over slightly, but I've ended up just doing sitting on there and. The nozzle, I'm not sure where that is. I think it's in one of these lockers, but I can find it. But yeah. Slightly unconventional shower situation, but it's uh, made me feel a hell of a lot better. Had the sailing for the last sort of three hours. Um, really, really nice. Just a flat, slightly rolly sea and about 10 and between 10 and 13 knots of breeze, which is perfect. We're doing pretty well. Um, we've got probably, I think uh, last I checked, we've got about 105 miles now, so we are closing. We've done pretty well this afternoon, considering we were sitting around like a duck on the water this morning. Uh, we do, we've been doing uh, probably about four knots since then, which is pretty good. There we go, that's kind of it really. <laughs> Warm up the chili a bit. Number three, beginneth, and we're windless again. I'm just hand steering at the minute, just trying to make some sort of progress forward, but I don't think it's going to work. I think I'm just going to have to furl the head sail and float about a bit. This is quite frustrating. We are 100 miles from Fastnet um, and about 70 miles from Penzance, I think. No, it can't be that far, about 50. Well, 
Well, the good thing about this situation in comparison to last night is that we're not surrounded by TSS's um, rocky islands and uh, lots of jester challenges all grouped up in a small space. So basically rig the boat for some wind if it comes along, connect the telepilot up and I'm going to get my head down for a bit. Um, we've just got one jester behind us over there. He's going to run into the same block, so yeah, looks like the tide's going to be doing the only bit of movement we're going to be doing for the next few hours. Yeah, I mean, really, that thing needs at least eight or nine knots of breeze to work in. What we got between three and four knots at the minute from variable different directions. <laughs> Bloody hell. Oh well, sleepies. So it's Wednesday morning. I uh, had a pretty uh, uneventful night. Um, it's almost windless again. Um, I uh, managed to get some sleep, which was pretty helpful. Um, and uh, yeah, this morning I've. I've just found that we're running a bit low on on power from from use and all the rest of it. Um, had to charge a few things up, so I've I've moved my solar panel into the cockpit. Um, it's now a roving solar panel, just propped up right like that, and uh, getting some of that sun onto it, which is actually doing extremely well at the minute. Um, I think about one one point five amps, which is just what we need so when I've got it on that section it it just it's not until midday that it starts to charge and if you've got the sail up it'll never get onto it uh, sometimes so this is the inside of the cabin while underway there's my permanent bunk. I've stopped putting it away now because just I sleep when I can. Um, and uh, yeah, it's more napping really. Uh, I've got my timer on the wall there. That's just ready to go. Uh, probably have a coffee or something to eat. Sure, now I've got the kettle on. Um, and uh, gonna get my head down for half an hour or something. I usually try and get more sleep during the day. Um, and then at night time, everything seems to happen at night time for some reason. I don't know. That's where we're at now. Middle of the Celtic Sea. About 50 miles east of the Fastnet Rock. There's a small space, so I have to, if I'm making something, I have to tidy up all my charts and things like that. Otherwise, they just get covered in crap. Um, I've, uh, as I've mentioned, I've got the solar panel just out in the um cockpit um today because i was getting low again and where it is it's just it's not very good so where that is we were getting about yeah like nearly two amps which is well that 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 solar panel is rated maximum 2.2 .2 amps so that's at maximum um operation at the minute which is brilliant um and that's been like that all day so it's had about four hours so far I've charged up my phones, my camera batteries, um, and it's now on the 12 volt for this evening. Turn you off. Um, I'm running a bit low on coffee. Uh, it was a bit damp up the forward hatch. I think the hatch need resealing with a bit of um, uh, grease or something again because it just it was run. I think it's some water been getting over and running in. The deck was covered a few times when uh, we came out from Plymouth on the way to uh, the Lizard Point, as it was all headwind and head sort of swell, if you like. So some of the stuff got wet. So I've just opened up the hatch. That's just drying out today. You're just keeping my life jacket. My jacket got absolutely soaked around the sillies a couple of nights ago when it absolutely hammered it down. Uh, I keep my jacket there, my warm jacket. Last night was the first night I wore it, but then I found myself getting really quite warm. So I don't think I need that, probably not until Scotland. Um, and then down here is my snack bag. 
I've just got like nuts and sweets and stuff like that. That seems to stay reasonably permanently out. And then underneath here is my is my um, sort of food bin where I try and keep stuff as cool as possible. Um, and that's sort of below the water line there all the time. So it's actually pretty good. Um, I keep rice and um, like uh, sort of herbs and spices in there. And then in there's just I just keep coffee and anything I used to make sort of brews, cup of soups and what have you, which is pretty good. Um, got Barry doing ever so well there, uh, looking after the fire extinguisher. Well done, Barry. First ship for a couple of days. He looks like he's heading towards the Fastnet TSS, which is now about 35 miles away. Okay, it's the Irish weather forecast, uh, first time I've heard of that one, um, kind of pretty glad I did hear that one, because uh, it's not really changed since um, since the weather forecast that I had from uh, Sunday. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, light and variable 3 to 4, uh, occasionally 5, which is what I expected, um, and the visibility around uh, Thursday morning is Mr. Fog, so... Uh, expect, I'm probably going to expect some um, reduced visibility for you know, crossing the TSS potentially. Um, so I'm going to sort of just keep the AAS on and keep it on long range and just yeah check anything that's coming in. Right, I think that's pretty much all of the sun for today. Uh, solar panels been charging up everything really nicely actually. I'm really glad I've like did that because if we just sat there I wouldn't have been seeing anything like um, the amount of charge that we were getting off it um, but that's just made me want to uh, really get uh, like our wind generator now um, especially for Scotland if it's, if it's going to be like like rainy for, and overcast for days on end there's absolutely no way I'm gonna gonna be able to keep things charged up so I am gonna go and uh, look at a wind generator thing um, if anyone has got one that they don't want, um, let me know. I'll be interested in buying it off you. Yeah, honestly, you can't get any better sunsets than this. We're now 35 nautical miles to the Fastnet TSS. It's 8 o'clock. I think I might have a visitor. This vessel has been coming straight at me at eight knots. Uh, I think I'm going to get intercepted by border force. Uh, that is a very hazardous guess. I'll just see if I can. There it is. It's coming straight at me out of nowhere. I didn't expect to meet and greet this far out, in all fairness. 
unless they've been watching me for like ages. I'm still not sure what that is. I tried to focus on the binos. I think it's a fishing vessel. But I'm not sure. I don't know why he came out here so quickly. There's no um, navigational lights. Just this red one. I guess he's like bringing in his trawl or something. Usually a red flashing light is like fuel tar cargo transfer, you know. But, oh, I don't know. Yeah, that's, um, I don't think that's customs. I think that's a fishing boat and he's bringing in his gear. Persane. So we're here, uh, just coming up to the TSS, probably about four miles from our waypoint now. Um, but the problem is there's no wind um, and we've missed the tide. So if we cross the TSS and round Fastnet Rock, we're going to be against potentially like, up to one and a half knots of, um, of tide. And with the wind direction and strength as it is, it's a no-goer. Um, we'll just end up getting pushed back the way we, we came from. So the only thing I'm going to do is just keep clear of the mainland, and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna heave to now, um, and I'm gonna hang off crossing the TSS because once I've crossed the TSS, I'm kind of committed. If you know what I mean, um, I could probably round fast net and come back out, but it's just unnecessary mileage and just more more work uh and we're, you know we're waiting for this increase in wind which can cut would come could possibly come at any time i've been hand steering this morning because the wind pilot just it wasn't reacting at all it's very frustrating we've had it all the way across um we've had good bits and then not so good bits um but yeah it's it's just you know when you get to this point, <laughs> you just want to get in. It is like bang your head against a a boat sort of situation. Okay, balance are out a bit. I think we're about there. Okay, so I'm on the move again. <laughs> Literally about 20 minutes after I hove to. Uh, the, the breeze has sort of kicked up, so I'm gonna gonna see about getting across this shipping lane. Um, and also, these cumulus clouds are a sign of the day's wind, and it's going to be getting up as well. And they look like nice blustery uh, cumulus. So by the time I get to the TSS, hopefully we should have a decent. Well, they're forecasting 13 to 14 knots um, this morning, and I'm thinking this is what that is, so, yeah. So, yeah, we get on. Here's the fast net rock. We've had dolphins closing in on the shoreline, which is nice. It's up some of them just swim with the boat at this nice gentle speed. It's amazing. That's an impressive piece of engineering to build that on there. Well, there we go, rounding fast net rock. I'm just going to clear it a little bit and then turn round, or not turn round, but head along the coast. I'm hoping there's going to be some additional breeze.
And we're going for it now. <laughs> Probably the fastest been all all the time <laughs> for the last four days. I need the last last push. Pretty only about but just a well about an hour away now. Uh, it's still quite a lot of tide. And that over there is the finish line after four days at sea, 300 miles and next to no wind. There we go, 15.30 and in Baltimore Harbour, fantastic. I cannot believe that's done. I've finished it. Wow. Find an anchor spot, I think, and have a beer. Dave, <laughs> the fold out dinghy. So it's nice to finally get ashore and stretch my legs and uh, yeah, go and have a pint of Murphy's. Yeah, it's kind of like eyes on the prize towards the end. Uh, this is Chris coming in. It's on the Friday, I think. And uh, the weather had definitely changed by that stage. I went for a stroll up to the harbour entrance there with uh, Rory and George. Pretty wild day, but it didn't matter because the scenery was absolutely incredible. I tried to have a look at the fast net uh, rock from there, but I think it was hiding behind Clear Island. And managed to get a look around Dunnasid, I think it's pronounced, castle. It's about 800 years old, I think. Um, originally Norman, and then the O'Driscoll clan, I think. And now it's occupied um, by family. Um, they actually renovated and restored the whole castle about 20 years ago, and it's absolutely amazing. Fantastic job. There's also an archaeological excavation prior to, found quite a few artifacts and things which had been left behind by their previous occupiers and owners. Hey, many thanks for watching this video, hope you enjoyed it, uh, give us a thumbs up if you did. And um, yeah, the Round Britain Challenge is going to continue on in August. Um, I am currently home for this month. I uh, managed to get to Belfast with her, which is pretty impressive considering the like weather went to absolute pot after I left Baltimore. Um, yeah, if you want to uh, donate to my uh, Cancer Research UK fundraiser uh, running alongside this, um, I'll leave a link in the description box below, uh, give that a look and uh, any donations, yeah, massive thumbs up. Um, yeah, so that's all for now, um, I'll try and get another upload done in another week, we'll see how it goes, stay safe, cheers.